on the second Sunday that we're unable to gather as a congregation. Let's remember, love has not been cancelled. Prayer has not been cancelled. Conversations have not been cancelled. Kindness has not been cancelled. Reading has not been cancelled. Songs have not been cancelled. Worship as a way of life has not been cancelled. Hope has not been cancelled. Embrace all the good that remains. Creator God, giver of all life and all being, fill us with your spirit, fill us with your love, fill us with your grace, so that we might return these gifts in praise and honour to you. Fill us so that we might serve you in love and in grace and grow your kingdom here through our actions, through our words, through all that we do and say. Forgive us for those times when we go our own way, walk our own path. Forgive us the times when we speak unthinkingly, when we act selfishly. And so draw us near to you, so that we might be filled afresh with your love and your grace and set upon a path that serves you and delights you. Loving God, we praise you this day for all your gifts. We give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is in him and through him we are reconciled to you, that we are united in that love, that grace that you pour out upon your creation. We give thanks for the gift of your Spirit given so that we might know your eternal presence, so that we might draw upon you for comfort and for strength in these days. Loving God, we give thanks for the gift of your church. Scattered though we are, and for this moment, isolated in our own homes, but we give thanks that these are no barrier to you. These things mean nothing to you, for you are the creator of all being. So reach into our lives, wherever we may be at this moment, and bless us as we praise your name. 
and hear us as we pray in the words that Jesus taught, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 6 to 11. It's from the Good News Translation. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God when they are controlled by the human nature, for they do not obey God's law, and in fact they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to, if, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you, because you have been put right with God, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from death, lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies, by the presence of his Spirit in you. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. Paul's letter to the church in Rome is, without a doubt, a fairly dense read. It takes a lot to unpack, it takes a lot to get your head round. So it might seem a strange reading to choose for this morning, but if you're a member of one of the congregations I preach in, then you'll know that I tend to stick to the lectionary. And I struggled with this particular lectionary reading for this week. But there was something about it that kept me coming back to it. There was this idea that we are connected to God through his Spirit. It goes on about sin and the impact of sin And we often think of sin as rules that we've broken, things that we've done that aren't correct. At its most fundamental, its most basic, sin is separation from God. It is wandering along our own path, following our own way, denying God the glory, denying God our thanks and our praise. It's about focusing on ourselves. Without a doubt, Paul is right. When we wander off from God's path, when we follow our own way, then what we're doing is following the way of the world. And so often that means it's a selfish way. It means that we follow our own desires. We think only of ourselves. And so we forget that we're part of a community. Forget that we have a care for the creation and the people around us. Forget that we have a better way in following God. But having God's Spirit in us means that we are reliant on God to follow that path. It is God's gift to us that we have the strength and the courage through his Spirit to follow him. There is much in these days that reminds us of separation. When we think of all that we're doing in this moment, in this time, in this place, so much of it is about separating ourselves from others, often from those that we love, often from those that we are desperate to see. And separation comes with a price. I think we've seen that in much of what's going on 
in the communities around us. We see selfishness of panic buying, perhaps through the best of intents, not wanting to be caught out, not sure when we'll be able to go shopping again. But when we have a connection to our community, when we have that network of friends and family and neighbours, then we have others that we can rely on. We don't need to be selfish. We don't need to think only of our own needs, but rather we can start to think of others. Paul says that sin, separation from God, leads to selfishness, leads to a falling in the world. We drop down to lower levels. We cease to think beyond ourselves. This time when isolation and separation are very much our watchwords, then it can be easy to fall into that same pattern of thought, to be focused only on ourselves. Perhaps we have half an eye on the weeks, perhaps even months ahead, when life will get back to normal. We see signs of spring around us. The daffodils behind me have, have come into bloom just recently. And even on a dull day like this, the sun creeps out occasionally, but mostly there's cloud. But that bright yellow, sunny flower glows and reminds us of spring, of life, of newness, of the turning of the seasons. As I'm standing here, you, you may or may not hear the birds singing behind me. I've just noticed that I have a, a congregation of one at the moment. There's a pigeon sitting in the tree above me, ignoring me perhaps. But the birds are singing, the flowers are out. Signs of hope that spring is here and that new life is just ready to, to burst forth. I wonder when things are over and things are back to normal in our community, what will it look like? What will this early spring look like in our community? Perhaps we will set aside some of our distance. Perhaps we will set aside some of our differences and start to look out for one another. Start to build community around shared values, appreciation of those who work so often unremarked, those who care for us, those who keep us well fed, those who keep us safe and secure. Separation, isolation can bring with it that sense of disconnection. God's Spirit is given to us so that we are not disconnected from God. God walks with us and would have us know that, to draw upon that strength and that courage and that comfort. As a community, we can take that same spirit with us as we see the world as God sees it. A place for new life, a place for growth, a place for hope. What kind of community do we want to rebuild after all this is over? One that is connected, one that is a community of love and care, that values everyone, that shows that appreciation, not just one evening a week, not just at those moments when we all get together, but at all times, giving thanks, encouraging, caring, through God's Spirit in us, for he never separates us, himself from us. He walks with us and cares for us. Turn to our God. Know his Spirit in you. Rejoice and praise him and be free to love and to live in this world as he wills. Amen. Father God, 
You are the ultimate healer. Father, we come before you to pray for those infected with this virus. We pray not only for their healing, but for them to be comforted while they heal. Lord, please eradicate every ounce of this virus from their bodies. Please heal every cell in their bodies, every infected part of their being. We pray for not lasting effects of their bodies from this illness. Please, Father, heal them inside and out. Provide them with the medical care they need, with the medication they need, with their healing, not only physical, but spiritually, so that they may live life abundantly ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, worry and fear are not of your heart. John chapter 1 verse 4 reminds us that perfect love casts out all fear. We pray your perfect love upon the hearts of those who are burdened with the fear of this virus. Lord, we know without a doubt that you are bigger than the threat of anything, especially illnesses. Please comfort those who are living in fear. Please free them from their bondage that anxiety creates within. Remind them that you are still in control. Help those who are living in unease to trust you in this time. We rest at your feet such fears and cast them upon you in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for those who are caring for the sick. It takes a kind and selfless heart to care for those who are sick. Father, we pray for them. We pray that you would be their source of rest, their source of replenishment when weary, and their source of hope in such overwhelming times. We pray blessings upon those caregivers. We also pray for their health, that they may not fall ill. Father, protect them against the germs of coronavirus and help all those who are giving to be protected as they nurse others back to health. Bless them, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for those who have lost their fight against this virus. May they rest in peace in your care. Comfort their loved ones in their time of need. Father, we pray for the scientists. Help them to find that urgently needed cure. And Father, we pray for the government and officials. May they continue to find ways to help every one of those who has been affected by being confined to home. Father, in this time of great anxiety, please give us the strength as we pray for those closest to us. Keep them safe and in your care. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
May God's glory shine through you, out into all the world, and may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you and all whom you love, this day and evermore. Amen.